Right now I'm in Utah where it's cloudy, there's snow on the mountains, the roads are slippery and it's raining. What better place to test out a truck? And on top of that, I'm gonna take you to school. This is the new Ford Ranger. This mid-sized body on frame pickup truck goes into a new generation completely redesigned, ready to tackle the globe as it is being sold in more than 180 markets around the world. Ford listened to what their customers want, so this truck now gets a more rugged look than the previous generation, has a longer wheelbase and wider track, brand new body panels, functional fender vents, and a sculpted hood. Four different trims will be available, XL, XLT, Lariat, and something a little special which I'll get to later. And various packages will be offered to get the Ranger customized to your very liking. The new Ranger will only come in a Super Crew 5 foot short bed configuration with seating for 5 because that's what Ford said their customers usually want. So if you want a long bed, well that's too bad. I like this look of the Ranger now. It looks like a mini F-150. And let's be honest, everybody wants their truck to look a little aggressive, have a little mm to it, and this does. Along with the new aggressive look, the interior of the Ranger is all new as well. Cloth seats come standard and the cabin has an overall modern look to it. There's good space for front passengers and plenty of storage for your items or tools. So for this XLT trim, the seats feel good. The material is a little scratchy for me and I wouldn't pick this color. I'll definitely pick a darker color, but they are nice and supportive and I do appreciate how far back on its rails it can go. But that's bad news for your rear seat passengers because there's not a lot of space back there. Tall passengers will find themselves a bit cramped in the rear quarters. At 6 foot 4 inches, I don't have much leg room behind my ideal driving seat position and I sit a bit upright, but at least the back of the front seats are soft. There's also added storage under the rear seats and extra functionality with folding flat rear seat backs. Inside the cabin, what Ford took in mind from its customers is practicality and being able to have functionality with your interior so there's a lot of storage space in here there's a slot under the dash there's a large center console there's storage right here and yeah you can pretty much place whatever you need to tools small items your phone in a lot of different spots which is nice the fit and finish is okay there's not a lot of squeaks or rattles but on this grab handle right here it could be a little bit better but at least you don't hear a lot of things out of place. For hauling large items, the bed of the Ranger is wide enough to accommodate four feet wide sheets of plywood, has tie down points to help secure loads, and available power outlets. To access the bed, there's optional box side steps that are wide enough for work boots and can support up to 300 pounds. If you need to illuminate a work or campsite, the Ranger has an available class exclusive zone lighting feature. Climbing back inside, there's a standard 8-inch digital gauge cluster and available 12-inch infotainment touchscreen using Ford's new SYNC 4 operating system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. The screens in here look good. The gauge cluster is nice and clear and this center screen is nice and large and clear as well. And I like how it's integrated into the dash and it is vertically oriented but it doesn't really matter because it's easy to work. I like how the volume knob and the climate controls are physical buttons and knobs and you even have some embedded into the screen as well but it's nice and easy to work. There's no distractions and that is a good thing. Two engine options will be available. The first option is Ford's 2.3 liter turbo four cylinder with 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. The other option will be the 2.7 liter turbo V6 making 315 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque, which won't be available until summer of this year. Both engines are mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission with rear wheel drive coming standard on all models. And of course, four wheel drive with an optional locking rear differential is available at an additional cost. Right now I'm driving the Ranger XLT trim and this has the 2.3 liter engine 
and yeah it delivers adequate power and the shifts are smooth with that 10 speed automatic you pretty much don't even notice when you have to upshift or downshift i'm not really in love with the noise it's a little uh it's a little whiny sometimes but it's getting the job done right now i'm driving in four high because it is wet outside but the Rangers doing a good job of keeping traction and keeping me stuck to the road. Let's accelerate from a dead stop. All right, it's a little delay, but yeah, power delivery, it's good. But not in love with the noise, but it's okay. Let's see if I needed to pass somebody or catch up to a Subaru Ascent. I floor it and yeah, you can catch up pretty quick. It delivers some power quickly. Hey, I'm trying to talk about acceleration thingy. So yeah, it delivers acceleration promptly and the shifts are nice and quick. That's good. Be in the right lane, then take exit two toward Park City. I'm gonna put you on mute. Rangers with the 2.3 liter turbo four powertrain get an EPA estimated 21 miles per gallon in the city and 25 on the highway for rear wheel drive models, while four wheel drive models get a small ding in efficiency. Rangers with the 2.7 liter V6 mil get 20 miles per gallon in combined driving for four wheel drive models. I skipped rear wheel drive models with the V6 because the EPA hasn't listed it at the time of this sultry VO recording. With the proper configuration, the Ranger can have a max payload of 1,800 pounds and 7,500 pounds of max towing capacity with available Pro Trailer Backup Assist, Trailer Reverse Guidance, Trailer Sway Control, and various camera angles to help keep an eye on what you're hauling. As far as brakes, they feel good. They're nice and progressive. The steering feels good. It's nice and responsive. And going into this left turn, yeah, you feel the ranger just kind of swaying you to the other side a little body roll yeah definitely feels like a truck as far as suspension it's doing a good job at keeping a composed ride i don't have a payload in the back and for the older trucks i know you would have to have something back there to keep the pickup nice and level but for right now the ranger's doing a good job at keeping a nice stable ride I'm driving in the slippery drive mode just because it is a bit wet outside and this puts me in four high just to maximize traction and if you want to change up your drive modes you just twist this knob here which feels pretty good it's knurled so it's nice to the touch and when you do go to another drive mode let's say like normal it puts you in too high but the good thing is you can change that on the fly right here near the drive mode selector and you could go back to four high it'll let you know in your gauge cluster that it's changing up and you're a four high you still get that good traction the ranger uses a fully boxed all high strength steel frame for better durability and ride quality with an independent suspension in front and a live rear axle with leaf springs and outboard shock absorbers. It gets 9.3 inches of ground clearance and the longer wheelbase allows the truck to have an improved 30.2 degree approach angle. There is some road noise coming into the cabin, especially at higher speeds, like on the highway. And when you're really on the throttle, you can hear that engine working. But besides that, visibility looks good. I have a nice view of the road and going outward looks good. Over my left shoulder, it looks great. Over my right, not so much. It's a big C pillar right there, but thankfully there's a lot of available safety tech. All Rangers come with Ford Copilot 360 with available safety features which include advanced track with roll stability control, blind spot monitor with cross traffic alert and trailer coverage, pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking, and forward collision warning. There is no blue cruise on the Ranger, but adaptive cruise control with stop and go is an option. The Ranger proves to have decent chops on the road, but how does it do off road? Let's go to school. If you're inclined to seek some extreme fun, let me introduce you to the new Ranger Raptor. 
Finally coming to America, this is the most powerful and off-road capable Ranger and now with every purchase, the owner can attend a one-day Ranger Raptor Assault School in Utah which lets you experience the full capability of the Ranger Raptor and get advice from professional drivers. Oh, and don't worry, you don't use your personal truck. They have some provided for you at the school and you'll be able to rock crawl, speed run, and if you're lucky, get a little dirty. Or a lot of dirty like me, I was filthy. The Ranger Raptor comes with a 3 liter turbocharged V6 and pushes out 405 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque, made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission, standard full time 4 wheel drive with a 2 speed transfer case, front and locking rear differentials and gets 17 mpg in combined driving. It's about 3.5 inches wider than the standard Ranger, has 33 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain K03 tires on 17 inch wheels, dual exhaust tips, underbody protection, forged aluminum double A arm suspension in front, Watts link suspension in the rear, and Fox 2.5 inch live valve internal bypass shocks. On the inside, you get unique Ford Performance front seats with orange trim, sport steering wheel, paddle shifters, additional drive modes, and six auxiliary switches for off-road hardware. Right now, I'm on the trail course for the Ranger Raptor, and this thing is capable. These 33-inch tires are doing a great job at gripping the terrain. Right now we're going over a lot of big rocks and we're in rock crawl mode for the drive modes and for low and there's a lot of good power being delivered down below. Granted, for some reason when you're going downhill, when you're shifting from first to second or second to third, it gives you a little bit of a bump. But besides that, this is definitely working out and it's really capable. One thing that I do enjoy about the Ranger Raptor is the comfort. These seats are doing a great job at just handling all of the bumps, keeping me supported, and just being nice and soft. So it's good that when you're in an off-road oriented drive mode, you have this screen going on. And not only does it have a front-facing camera, but you can also engage your lockers at a press of a button. So right here on the screen, I engage my rear locker it lets you know on your gauge cluster that it's engaged and right now we're about to ta tackle some uh, pretty steep rocks let's see how the range raptor does and yeah it gets over it almost no problem that was pretty good on that screen you can also access trail control which is pretty much like a rock crawl cruise control and you engage it right here, you press the buttons on your steering wheel, and you can go from one to 20 miles an hour. The suspension is tuned so good because there's such a great balance between comfort and performance. I'm going over all of these pretty big rocks and it's not killing my back. It's not really throwing that much of a jarring motion into the cabin where it hurts. It's doing a good job. It's performing really well. Yeah, it's not a V8, but you, know, you either hate it or you love it. This V6 sounds appropriate for this Ranger Raptor, in my opinion. But let us know what you think down in the comments section, because I know you will. Yes, the Ranger Raptor definitely proves to be a capable truck up in the mountains. But if speed is more your thing, the high speed courses are also a good time at a much faster pace. Right now I'm on the high speed course for the Ranger Raptor and it's really muddy out here. So they're encouraging you to find a nice drier line so you can get some good grip. But yeah, just have as much fun as you can with the Raptor. It's actually pretty cool. They have their braking cones, their apex cones and lots and lots of mud and slippery terrain. But the Ranger Raptor is doing a great job. And for this special trip, I was even offered to jump a Raptor at the school. So if you're more inclined to do crazy stuff, like right, jump a- full power, when you're ready. Whenever you want to jump a Raptor, you can come here. Go, full power, go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Lift! Lift! 
<laughs> I'm glad you could see my eyes. <laughs> that was cool. Hey, I just jumped a truck for the first time. <laughs> Pricing for a base Ford Ranger XL trim starts at $34,265, which does reflect the destination charge and includes LED headlamps, fog lights, 17-inch wheels, 10-inch infotainment touchscreen, single-zone climate control, cloth seats, and six speakers. In typical Ford fashion, the different trims, various packages, and standalone features can add all the trucky things you'd want like larger wheels, running boards, power folding mirrors, sliding rear glass, larger screens, 360 degree camera, and more off-road capable options. If you're checking out the off-road ready Ranger Raptor, well that's gonna start at just over 57,000 bucks. If you're looking for a mid-sized truck like the Ford Ranger or maybe one of the competitors, go on kbb.com and get a fair purchase price. kbb.com, click the link above for more details. The Ford Ranger is looking to take on lots of revamped mid-size pickup competitions such as the heavy-hitting Toyota Tacoma, Chevy Colorado, GMC Canyon, and Nissan Frontier. With plenty of truck options, Ford tries to take a step up by delivering a product they know their customers will like and lots of customization to provide what their customers need, and a baby Raptor that won't take up two parking spots. The Ranger will be made at Ford's Michigan assembly plant and should start arriving to dealers soon. So Ford listened to their customers and delivered a pickup truck that not only rides good, but has plenty of practicality and powertrain options and a Raptor. So if all of that is to your liking, maybe you should check one out for yourself. <laughs>